Hey guys, it's Jessica here, and it's already August, guys. August in the Philippines is a month where we celebrate Buena Wika, which is a month-long observance dedicated to promoting and honoring the Filipino language and culture. And for today's video, we're going to be talking about the beauty and amazing diversity of the Filipino language and answering the most common questions people have about it. So as someone who also lived in the Philippines for a while now, it's been already more than 10 years, I think, I do understand the complexity of the Philippine languages. You know, I first came to the Philippines in Bacolod where they spoke the language Hiligaynon, or in there, I used to call it Ilongo. In the school I went to, La Salle, they actually had a Filipino class. And that class was dedicated to learn one of the official languages of the Philippines, which is Filipino, which is different, very much different from Hiligaynon. I was really shocked by that concept actually because coming from a country, Korea, where we only have one language, we do have different dialects, but it doesn't mean it's a different language. But in the Philippines, it's a different story. So today, we're going to figure all about it. Kamusta? Kablao. Maayong aga. Naimbag nga adlaw. Diyos mabalos. So for today's video, we're going to have a special person who is actually going to help us learn the different questions about the topic of Philippine language. We have the assistant, Professor Janelle M. Nieto, who is the head of the language division of UP Los Baños Department of Humanities. So yeah, let's get started. First things first, we are going to talk about the importance of language in culture. Language is an integral part of one culture's identity. It shapes how we perceive the world, express our thoughts and emotions, and pass down our values and traditions to our future generations. And in the Philippines, over 180 languages thrive. Each one carries a piece of nation's history and heritage. Some of the most widely used languages in the Philippines are Filipino, which is the national language, and we have English, which is the second official language in the country after Filipino. And we have the famous Cebuano, also known as Bisaya, Ilocano, Hiligayo, Gainon, Waray Waray, Kampampangan, and Bicor. So there's so many more. And honestly, this is really the part of the Philippines that I, as a foreigner, really, really am fascinated about. Because the first place I went to in the Philippines was Bacolod, where they spoke Hiligaynon, right? And when I first heard Filipino, just in Filipino class, it really sounded like a totally different language, you know, the tone. And I was really most shocked when I went to Cebu, which was the third time I felt like drastically the difference. Wow. So Cebuano also, like it, it's totally different. So even if I'm in the same like one country, it feels like I'm traveling in so many different countries within the country because of the diversity in languages. So just the fact that the Philippines have this much variety of languages within the country is already a one big asset to the Philippines cultural identity. And now I'd like to clarify the difference between language and a dialect. So in linguistic terms, a language is a system of communication that has its own distinct vocabulary, grammar, and phonological rules. But on the other hand, a dialect refers to original or social variation of language. Dialects share the same core vocabulary and grammar as the parent language, but may have some differences in the pronunciation, word usage, and idiomatic expressions based on the specific region or community where it's spoken. For example, if we take the parent language as Tagalog, then the dialects follow like Laguna Tagalog, Batangas Tagalog, Quezon Tagalog, etc. etc. However, it is also important to note that the distinction between a language and a dialect can sometimes be complex and could be influenced by very social, political, and historical factors. So now, the most confusing part. Is Filipino and Tagalog the same thing? You know, I know all of you guys always taught me, right? Every time I say like, oh, you know, I know how to speak a bit of Tagalog. You guys told me, oh no, you have to say, you know how to speak some Filipino, not Tagalog. Tagalog is one of the languages and Filipino is the official language. So like, okay, so official language, okay. Okay, like, okay, Filipino, Tagalog, feel. <gasps> so let's figure it out. What is the difference between Tagalog and Filipino? Filipino and Tagalog are both considered as languages. I think a lot of people misconstrue Tagalog as a dialect and Filipino as the language. But according to recent surveys, there are around 180 plus languages in the Philippines and Tagalog is one of the 
indigenous languages. I think one major difference between the two is that Tagalog is considered as an indigenous language in the country. But Filipino actually started as a concept. It was born out of the need to have a national language. Another reason that sets Filipino apart from Tagalog is the specific provision made in the constitution for its development. So since Filipino was declared as a national language and official language, it needs to be more accommodating to different mm-hmm. cultures and to become more adaptive. So other languages in the country may help in developing the national language. In terms of grammar, there's not much difference because Tagalog is the basis of the Filipino language. When a Tagalog speaker is talking to a Filipino speaker, they can easily understand each other because they're using the same grammar. They're using mm-hmm. parang same structure. It differs in terms of how Tagalog and Filipino are currently developed. Actually, there are agencies established to really cater to the development of Filipino because it has a particular purpose to become the national lingua franca. So, as Professor Janelle explained, Filipino and Tagalog are not the same. Tagalog is a specific language primarily spoken in Luzon, while Filipino is the standardized version of Tagalog that is still currently being developed and serves as the national language of the Philippines. Now, I'd like to talk about the beauty of the Tagalog language. One thing that fascinates me about Tagalog is in its richness in expressions. There are expressions that you can't directly translate in English or any other languages. So for example, there's the word gigil, which means the irresistible urge to pinch someone's cheeks due to cuteness. <laughs> and then also one word I have to say is gilig. You know, gilig is really like that word that really hit me hard, you know, during my elementary school days with my crushes and MUs. So with Professor Janelle, I also talked about the different um, Tagalog words that does not have a direct translation. So let's see. Number one is uh, lihi, paglilihi. This is a combination of different things actually that pregnant women go through. So it's not just morning sickness. So I think other cultures may be familiar with morning sickness, but mm-hmm. actually paglilihi in the Filipino culture manifests differently among women and supposedly in various ways that includes morning sickness. Also, an inexplicable liking towards someone Mm. or towards food. Mm. So it's like an umbrella term for a lot of the things that pregnant women go through, typically now during the first trimester. The second one is uh, namamahay. So this pertains to an unsettling feeling when we are in another person's house. In some cases, then we use that when we can't go in another person's bathroom. We're not used to using <laughs> that toilet seat. One good word could be pakikiisa. The root word is isa which is one, it develops into a new concept. You're not alone anymore because you learn how to, to be with another group. So from these examples, we can see that Tagalog is actually a language that can capture complex situations or concepts in a single expression, which is totally beautiful and I think it really reveals the depth of the Filipino culture. Now moving on to the broader Filipino language, Professor Janelle also mentioned very interesting about the Filipino language being a very expressive language which goes beyond words. It's almost like an art form which conveys the heart and soul of the speakers. I think all languages are expressive enough, meaning these languages really cater to the cultures they are cultivated in. Mm -hmm. And because our languages are shaped by our culture, vice versa. So we can say that what we have is based on who we are. And Mm -hmm. it goes for all the other languages. However, here in our country, I can think of at least two ways on how to describe how we express emotions. But this is not exclusive to the Philippine language. I think we can also see this in other Philippine languages. Number one is curses in profane language. Uh, a lot of people can relate to this. Uh, we use curse words not just when we're extremely angry or frustrated, but also even when we're extremely happy. Mm-hmm. For some people, these words just come out of their mouths, no? like mm-hmm. expression. The second one, an interesting study made by a well-renowned linguist in the country, Consuelo Paz. Their team made a study regarding the words with hati. In the, for example, pighati, which is extreme sadness, as well as dalamhati and uh, luwalhati. It pertains to the liver. So in other traditions, we usually refer to the heart as the source of the emotions. But Mm -hmm. according to their study, a lot of the words in Philippine languages pertain to liver as the source of the emotion. So hati means liver? I think yes. Part of its etymology. So now, you might be wondering, among the 180 plus different languages that there are in the Philippines, why choose Tagalog as the basis to the Filipino national language? 
before they decided to choose one basis for the national language. And before, it wasn't really called Filipino yet. They just mm-hmm. chose one language that was widely spoken already during the time. After the deliberations of uh, lawmakers before, they chose Tagalog. And then eventually, in 1987, it became official that the name of the national language is uh, Filipino. There also a lot of literature written in Tagalog at the time. Ironically, because of the Japanese occupation, they highly encouraged writers and other artists who produce texts in Filipino because they said that that's one way of pushing for nationalism easier for them at the time to choose a language that already has a lot of written texts. So here we can know that the decision of choosing Filipino as the national language of the Philippines was quite a thoughtful one because it serves as a linguistic bond that unifies the nation, celebrating its diverse cultural heritage while fostering a shared identity. So, as I said, there are over 180 different languages here in the Philippines and actually some of them are already dying or disappearing and or in need of preservation. So why is it important that Filipinos cultivate in their national language, Filipino? And I think this is a very relevant question now that we are also living in a very global world. So more and more, a lot of Filipinos, I feel like, right, noticed that they speak more and more English or they aspire to learn more of other languages rather than exploring more deeply on the Filipino language, right? I see so many people like that. And is that problematic? Is that bad? Or is that good? Why is it good? Or why is it bad? I think it's important to encourage more people to understand the importance of the national language because we can actually use our national language to assert sovereignty and to preserve our national identity, especially in the current context where a lot of our leaders, even leaders from different countries, are pushing for globalization. It's important that we still know who we are as a nation and not be dictated by what's highly influential by the culture of powerful nations, but we appreciate and we learn more about our own culture. It's even more important now than before because a lot of students go to college to earn their diploma so that they can work after finishing college. Some of those aspirations include going to another country to Mm -hmm. work there. And so it's very important for them to learn English and other foreign languages so Mm -hmm. that they can easily adapt to the Mm -hmm. culture and to the country where they're going to. But it now has very little space for really learning about your own culture mm-hmm. and your own the identity of the country where you're from. So mm-hmm. I think that's why it's important to have subjects and courses that really discuss how important language is and how important is cultural identity, especially mm-hmm. in this current context. Another important thing is that we democratize knowledge if we use language that are understandable to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So the knowledge is not just confined to the people who are well-versed or who are knowledgeable in using this specific language. So we encourage a lot of people to be involved and to be part of the discussion when we use languages that are familiar to them or Mm -hmm. the language that they are comfortable to use. The democratization of of knowledge is very important right now because a lot of indigenous knowledge are dismissed because some people just look at them as backward. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, some indigenous knowledge in the country can offer solutions. Studying our own culture can actually, not just to appreciate what we have, it can also serve as an avenue for us to look for solutions in the Mm -hmm. problems that are unique to our country. So truly, cultivating the national language Filipino holds immense significance in preserving the cultural fabric that defines the Filipino identity. So by nurturing Filipino, the Philippines safeguards its linguistic diversity, adapts to the currently changing environment, and ensures the beauty of its languages is cherished and is passed on to the future generations. Alright guys, so as we conclude this wonderful celebration of Buana Wika, let's take a moment to appreciate the magnificence of all the different Philippine languages. As always, this video is just a kickstarter to open conversations from you guys with you guys, so I'm very curious to know about your thoughts on this topic, what does language mean for you, what can we do to cultivate it, etc, etc. And before I end the video, I'd like to thank Professor Donnell, maraming maraming salamat po for contributing your knowledge for this video. It helped us so much. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Happy Buana Wika! Bye guys! <laughs>